Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round 3. Here are the standings after 38 games each. Lila is one point ahead of Stockfish and Lilenstein, and in last place we have Houdini. Scorpio managed to move one position up. And today we have a game between Lila and Houdini. The game started with d4, d5, and now we have c4 and e6. So we have a queen's gambit declined. Knight c3 and now c5, the Tarash defense. This is now the end of the book. Here Lila continued with c takes on d5. And black's main reply here is pawn takes on d5. And then usually game continues with knight f3, knight c6. And eventually these pawns get exchanged and white plays against this isolated pawn on d5. In this game, however, instead of um, pawn takes on d5, Houtini continued with c takes on d4. And this is now called the Shara Gambit. Black gives up a pawn for faster development and an initiative. And here Lila could uh, take back this pawn immediately or play queen a4 check. These are the two main variations. If the queen takes on d4 now, then this allows knight c6 since uh, this pawn is now pinned to the queen. And then the game usually continues with queen back and then pawn takes on d5, queen takes. And uh, after bishop d7, avoiding the queen trade, Black usually plays at some point knight f6, gaining even more time on the queen. However, in this game, instead of capturing on d4 immediately, Lila played queen a4 check, and only after bishop d7 she took on d4, when uh, knight c6 now, of course, doesn't work since the pawn is not pinned anymore. Houdini now continued with pawn takes on d5, and now we have queen takes, Knight f6 and now queen back. This is the best move for the queen. Otherwise the black pieces as they develop uh, would be kicking this queen around uh, the board. So in order to not lose even more time the queen goes back. And here the main moves is uh, bishop c5 or knight c6. But in this one Houdini played the novelty. Bishop b4 pinning this knight. Lila now continued with bishop d2. We have castles, e3, knight c6, and now knight f3. Lila wants to uh, get these pieces out as quickly as possible. We have a6, bishop e2, queen e7, and now finally Lila manages to castle here. And she's already very happy with her position as she has a, an extra pawn here on e3. And she evaluates this at plus 1, while Houdini evaluates it at only 0 0.4. Houdini continued now with rook e8 and Lila played queen b3, which is a multi-purpose move. First of all, it allows one of these rooks to come to the open d file and the queen also attacks b4 and it also defends the d5 square. Maybe at some point this knight could jump to d5. But Houdini now played bishop e6, harassing this queen. We have queen c2. But the queen has difficulties finding a good position, at least for now. At some point, rook c8 will come and this queen will uh, again feel uncomfortable here on this uh, open c file. Uh, probably will have to move again to avoid any tactics involving this um, uh, pin knight. Houdini now continued with h6. This takes away the g5 square from the knight, hitting this bishop. Rook d1, rook c8, and now Lila also continues with rook c1. And now we have bishop d6. Houdini wants to play b5 and even b4 to chase this knight away. But with the bishop on b4, if he plays b5 now, then Lila could meet this with a4. And there's no b4 in this position. And they would probably exchange these pawns. So instead, we have bishop d6 first. And now b5, b4 could come. Lila continued with bishop e1, allowing this rook to see the world. We have rook d8 and now finally queen b1. So as I mentioned, the queen has to move away from the c file. And here Houdini played g6. The idea being to, to allow this bishop maybe to come to f5 to chase this queen again, but also to fight for the e4 square. If Houdini could land one of his pieces on e4 and keep it there, that would be very, very good for him. But g6 also weakens the dark squares in black's camp and uh, Lila maybe could take advantage of it at some point. We have h3 
and now b5 and here Lira played a3 to stop b4 and Houdini continued with bishop b3 hitting this rook we have rook d2 and now after king g7 we have bishop d1 trying to fight for the d1 square uh, allowing one of these rooks to come here but the bishop is also going to c2 where it would have uh, more influence over e4 we have now bishop c4 and now after bishop c2 Houdini played knight e5 he wants to take here of course and uh, ruin white's kingside and taking the knight is not so great because now after queen takes there are some threats here on h2 and if Lila would play g3 here then queen h5 is very annoying hitting this pawn so instead of knight e5 Lila played here knight d4 avoiding the trade but Houdini played now knight c6, trying to trade this knight. He wants to get rid of it. And here Lila played rook d1. And now we have knight takes, rook takes, and now queen e5. Again, threatening to get into h2. But now after g3, queen here is not possible, of course, because this bishop is hanging. Houdini played here queen back to e7. And now we have knight e4, hitting this bishop again. And here Houdini already has to be very, very careful because there are some nasty, nasty tactics in this position. For example, removing the bishop to c7 where it also defends this rook would be already losing for black because Lila could take here on d8 and take again. And if the bishop takes, take on f6. And here the queen cannot recapture because that runs into bishop c3 and the queen is dead. So Houdini would be forced to take with the king. But now of the bishop c3, this king is uh, really in trouble. It has to come uh, to the center of the board. And, you know, he would be very, very uncomfortable there. He could get easily into trouble. So the bishop c7, not good. Taking this knight is also not so great because now after rook takes and uh, queen c7, uh, Lila could again give this check. And after the king moves, even play rook g4. And already threatened to sack something here on g6. And this would force Houdini now to go into the defensive and play rook g8, um, getting into a slightly passive position. And this would be better for Lila. So knight e4 is, is not good either. Instead, we have bishop e5, uh, placing this bishop onto this uh, very important diagonal. But here now Lila played simply bishop c3, giving up the exchange as uh, she uh, realized or calculated that without this bishop on e5 even an exchange down this bishop would be deadly as uh, there are some very weak dark squares here in uh, in uh, black's king side for example if the bishop would take here then lila could recapture with the rook and houdini would have nothing better here than to exchange a pair of rooks but now if the bishop takes on d4, we can see that this pin and this attack on this knight is very, very annoying. Lila would already uh, threaten here to win a piece, so rook c6 is forced. But now after b3, Lila would be threatening queen b2, adding even more pressure on this knight and threatening to win it. So here Houdini would be forced to play bishop d5 to uh, take this knight away. But now if the knight takes, rook takes, Lila can still continue with queen b2. And this is a very, very nasty position here for black. First of all, Lila can recapture this uh, rook at any time and get back her exchange. But it's even more effective to just keep this pin because now neither the king and neither the queen can really move because then uh, this rook would be lost. So this would be a very uh, nasty position here for black. So instead of bishop takes on d4, Houdini took with the rook and now lila here took back with the pawn she promoted her extra pawn into a passed pawn and now this pawn is uh, threatening to move up the board pretty pretty fast the game now continued with knight takes on e4 we have bishop takes on e4 bishop f6 keeping the bishop on this very very dangerous diagonal and here now lila continued with bishop g2 we have bishop e6 and now lila played queen e4 the idea being d5. Without the queens, Lila could uh, involve also her king maybe in uh, advancing this pawn. We have now queen d6, avoiding a d5. Queen b7, hitting all the pawns and also this rook. We have now h5, h4, 
and now rook c7 but Lila now played queen b8 pinning this rook to this queen if the rook moves then Lila would exchange the queens and have a better position with her extra pawn we have now bishop g4 hitting this rook but now rook e1 and Lila is threatening to play rook e8 here and then rook a8 and mate on g7 so Houdini has to be careful he played now rook c6 going for a queen exchange but as I mentioned that's very good for Lila we have queen takes rook takes and now rook e3 now of course taking this pawn is uh, still not good because then uh, after rook d3 this bishop is pinned to the rook and uh, this would be just uh, winning for white so instead of that we have a5 and now Lila played d5 and this pawn is now nicely defended by the bishop we have bishop takes on c3 rook takes now on c3 and now a4 and here after rook c5 Lila is already very happy with her position she evaluates this already at plus 2 and Houdini says plus 1.2 it's very hard to defend and also uh, keep an eye on this pawn we have now rook b6 and now bishop f1 hitting it again bishop d7 defending rook c7 rook d6 and now bishop back to g2 to defend this pawn bishop f5 and now f4 and Lila's plan is to quite simply come up with the king and if this king reaches c5 then this king would um, help the pawn advance but it would also attack the b5 pawn the game would be probably over at that point we have now rook b6 intending b4 trying to get some counterplay bishop f1 though and after b4 uh, taking this pawn wouldn't be so great because now black gets some counterplay and um, Lila would have nothing better here than to exchange uh, the pawns with rook c4 uh, rook takes on b2 rook takes on a4 and this would only be a drawish position now without the queen side pawns so instead of a takes on b4 Lila played here bishop c4 and this is a very very strong move uh, Houdini continued here with pawn takes and after pawn takes we can see that rook b3 is not really possible Houdini played rook b1 check and after king f2 playing rook a1 and trying to get this pawn is not good because here Lila could just simply play d6 and after rook takes on a3 Lila could take on f7 with check and then also take the bishop and play d7 and this rook can't really come to d3 since the bishop is guarding the d3 square this pawn would become a queen so Houdini has to be careful here instead of rook a1 he played rook d1 going behind the pawn Lila now continued with king e2 hitting the rook but here came bishop g4 check and after king e3 bishop f5 and we can see that the king can't really go up the board and help uh, this pawn move forward uh, the king is stuck for now to the king side we have now rook a7 hitting this pawn bishop c2 rook a5 and here now the rook is defending this pawn and Lila is threatening bishop e2 when uh, the king can't really stay on the d file and if it moves away then uh, d6 already is winning uh, if needed the rook could go to d5 even to shield the pawn so here now Houdini had to come up with something and he played bishop b3 which now forces the bishop exchange we have a takes on b3 and now after rook b5 Lila's idea is to give up the d5 pawn for the b3 pawn and then try to win with her extra a pawn we have now king f6 rook takes on b3 rook takes on d5 and rook and games are notoriously drawish but not this one Lila played here a4 intending rook a3 and then pushing this pawn so we have the rook uh, blocking the pawn we have now rook a3 and Lila evaluates this at plus 3 Houdini pretty much agrees at plus 3.2 here we have now king e7 king d4 and both kings are, are trying to, to come and help king d6 king c4 king c6 and after king b4 attacking the rook we have uh, rook d5 a5 and now rook b5 check king c4 rook c5 check king d4 rook d5 check king e4 and there are no more checks at least with the rook and here Lila is just uh, intending to, to play a6 here if rook d7 then after a6 and, and rook a7 blocking the pawn again 
the pawn maybe could be won, but in the meantime, Lira can play king e5 and uh, get to these pawns. So instead of rook d7, we have f5, forcing again the king back. And now we have king b7, uh, intending to, uh, to block the pawn now on a7, but here came rook b3 check, and after king z7, rook b6, now attacking the g6 pawn. And of course, uh, blocking with the rook, this, this just doesn't help. Here, uh, Lila easily wins uh, by just infiltrating there. While the black king takes the a pawn, Lila would be winning down all these pawns and uh, uh, she would be winning here uh, without any kind of problems. So rook d6, not good. Instead, we have rook takes on a5, but now Houdini loses the, the g6 pawn. And the game is over at this point because now the h pawn is also uh, dropping. There's nothing to do here. And um, after that we have uh, king h3, rook a1, and now rook b5 attacking this pawn again. And king g6 defending the pawn doesn't help. Lila could play here h5 check. And uh, if the king takes here then uh, after rook f5 this is a completely winning uh, end game here for Lila. So instead of king g6, we have rook h1 check, king g2, and now rook a1. But now Lila wins another pawn, and being three pawns up, this is a child's play, as they say. Now, of course, it's not that easy, but this is completely winning. The pawns are just marching up the board, and uh, that will be it. Lila will have a queen soon. We have a check, and another check, and then... At some point the pawns will advance and now we have Lila winning the rook here. This is a nice trick to know. F7 check and then take in here. And uh, that's it. We have now a queen probably. Yes. And then a knight. And then we have a queen sack. And then we'll have probably another queen. Yes. And then another queen sack. Wow. And will there be a knight sack? Let's see. Yes, there's a knight sack. And now this is a very, very well-known endgame for Lila, as she won this many, many times already. There we go. Mate on c8. A very interesting choice by Houdini to, to play the Shara Gambit, giving up a pawn for activity. He got activity, but Lila defended very, very well. And in the end, she managed to win with the extra pawn. In the end, I would like to thank to uh, René, Adolf, André, Pavel and everyone else who donated to my channel. Visit the store and also check out two of my other games on the right. Please subscribe, like and share and don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.